So when we think about dietary interventions, some of you have been discussing, I'm sure, uh, yesterday and later today, um, the interventions that have, are classically now known uh, in, in the area of, of cognition and brain aging, which is to say the finger study, which was a multimodal, of course, uh, intervention, the Mediterranean diet, and the mind, which is a, a form of Mediterranean diet intervention. And the, these approaches have a, a few points in common. Uh, we're trying to raise B vitamins, which are important for uh, the brain. We're trying to omega, uh, increase omega-3 fatty acids. And probably in most cases, uh, whether it's intentional or, or not, but in most cases, it, it's to reduce uh, the pressure on, on glucose metabolism, to reduce the dietary carbohydrate. And what I want to add to this mixture this morning is that uh, a ketone strategy uh, is definitely, in my view, important to helping meet the brain's energy needs, uh, which are pivotal to optimizing cognitive health during aging. So it's a combination of improving structural uh, elements within the brain, but also meeting the uh, deteriorating brain energy condition. Uh, and this is, we're taking the approach with ketones to achieve that. So when we think about cognitive issues during aging, obviously Alzheimer's disease uh, comes to mind. Uh, and in the area of the conditions that contribute to developing Alzheimer's disease, glucose metabolism in the brain is an early it's a significant and it's a well-known problem. This has been known for over 40 years now. So these are PET scans of fluorodeoxyglucose uptake, so glucose metabolism in the brain, and they can be used to calculate that the brain is consuming about 100 to 125 grams of glucose per day. In Alzheimer's disease, these cross-sectional scans uh, show the parietal lobe with the arrows where there's a, a definite decrease in glucose uptake. Uh, at the early stage of Alzheimer's disease, the first objective stage of Alzheimer's is called mild cognitive impairment. And this problem at the, uh, identified by the arrows here, the lower color, the greenish color, as, as opposed to the yellow to orange, indicates a problem with glucose uptake on the order of 10%. So about 10 to 12 grams of glucose per day is not getting into the brain. And in Alzheimer's disease, this progresses to above 20%, and when the disease is moderately advanced, can be on the order of 40 and even 50%. So this is a major problem with brain function. And it has been generally considered to be a, a consequence of the disease. And I, what I'll be showing you today is that this, in fact, is contributing to it. So our view of this contribution of the energy problem is, is basically shown in this slide here. What, I, what the focus of the slide is this vicious cycle between the low brain energy status, neuropathology, deterioration in cell function, cognitive decline, lower brain uptake, and uh, we go in a vicious cycle. <clears throat> but this problem is, as I said, is, is generally attributed to uh, neuropathology getting started first, then the cognitive decline and low brain energy status. And what I would hope this slide will demonstrate to you is that the problem with brain energy intake is actually present in, in those people at risk of Alzheimer's disease long, long, long before the onset of the cognitive issues. So presenilin-1 carriers, for instance, even in their 30s have lower brain glucose uptake. Um, APOE4 carriers in their 30s Women with insulin resistance, probably men as well, but we've identified this in women as young as 25 years old. People with a family history of Alzheimer's disease and indeed in the healthy elderly, there's all of them have declining brain glucose uptake before the onset of the cognitive decline. So this is a this precedes the issues associated with cognitive decline, and we think is contributing to it. So the question we asked is, what about ketone uptake? Because ketones are the brain's alternative fuel to glucose. Just by way of refresher, 
ketones are derived from dietary, dietary or stored fatty acids. In the case of the project that I'm going to describe to you, we use specifically a medium chain triglyceride that is ketogenic. Not all medium chain triglycerides are ketogenic. Uh, the ones we used contain C8 and C10 fatty acids, which produce acetoacetate, which is in equilibrium in the blood with uh, D beta hydroxybutyrate. One can purchase now on the internet salts of different ketones and esters of ketones that are usually in the beta hydroxybutyrate form and will equilibrate with acetoacetate. And these will, in fact, produce some acetone as well. The role I want to talk to you about today is ketones as fuels, but they are also lipid substrates, they are signaling molecules, and they have epigenetic effects. The method that we developed to assess ketone metabolism in the brain involves using a ketone PET tracer, acetoacetate labeled with C11, carbon 11. This is a short-lived isotope. So we do this um, injection first. We do the scan over 30 minutes with blood sampling. There's a washout period so that the, all the residual radioactivity is uh, removed from the body over this period of time and then the FDG PET is done afterwards. So this is a, a, a two hour sequence, um, which the person is in the same physiological state in the beginning as at the end. So these are directly comparable measurements. And usually within a day or two, often on the same day, we do the anatomical uh, functional uh, MRI and diffusion MRI. So by way of summary of the data that we have on glucose uptake, by the uh, Alzheimer brain versus ketone uptake. CMR is the cerebral metabolic rate. Glu of glucose, uh, ACAC is acetoacetate. This is the, the value. The values are shown here for the uptake of glucose and uh, ketones before giving a, a ketogenic MCT drink, a single drink, then after the mixed C8 and C10 or C8 alone. And you can see in this circle that instead of having the yellow to orange color for glucose uptake, the parietal lobe in these individuals has, is in more like a green color, showing the deficit in glucose uptake. And it doesn't change when you give the KMCT. Whereas when you look at the ketone uptake, the values are lower throughout the brain because ketones are only contributing about 3 to 5% of brain energy requirements. So these values are totally normal that they would be lower, but you can see that the ketones are getting into the brain. So this area, particularly in the parietal lobe, which was defective uh, for glucose uptake, there's no problem getting ketones into the brain with either of these ketogenic MCT substrates. So the cells in this area that were struggling to metabolize glucose have no problem metabolizing ketones. 